and welcome back. Now this is the second part of our party strobe, um, LED party strobe that is, as you can see on the workbench in front of us. In this video we're going to talk exclusively how to put this together based on the theory that we looked at last time. So we've got our 4 watt LED array in front of us connected up to an Arduino and if you're in the know you'll probably think how on earth does he get that to flash at such a slow rate without any jiggery pokery going on there on that circuit board and believe me there isn't so stay tuned and let's let's look at the circuit diagram first of all and that might give you a clue right let's have a quick look at the circuit diagram simple though it is we have our you know in the middle or nano um, we're using two analog inputs, both connected to a 10k resistor, so it's reading in 0 to 5 volts, very simple. The output PWM pin is on pin 9, going into a MOSFET. Remember, it's a logic level MOSFET connected to your LED array, which is then connected to 12 volts. Just a 10k resistor there on the gate to bring it down to ground, and Bob's your uncle, that's about it, really. You can put a 10 watt array in there, of course, yep. Now, what I've done now is uploaded the the final program for our Xenon, well not Xenon, our, our LED strobe, party strobe. So um, I've just uploaded it here, it's already started to run, you can see on the LED down here. Um, I'll try and get some um, effects on my video camera with um, the actual LED flashing, but the interesting thing is it misses the flash, it's too quick for the actual camera. And given that um, a strobe probably needs about, well, 10 to 12 they say this this um, original one here this goes up to 10 and that was always adequate for what I wanted so um, 10 10 or 12 I think is fine the actual mark space ratio they reckon you want it well it's a balance isn't it between brightness or perceived brightness and the actual stop start movement effect that you get with a strobe um, so you can fiddle about with the mark space ratio, which is why on here, this one does the um, actual frequency change. So by changing this, it changes the frequencies. You can see here. Right, let me bring that just a little bit closer. So that's the frequency. Bring it right down to sort of one flash a second. In fact, it's down to, there it is. Let's make it a little bit faster. Now the the brightness that you can see there is controlled by the pulse width modulation from here. So if I turn this all the way down to 1, look, you see it seems to have got a lot dimmer. Now it hasn't really, it's just that the, the flash duration is very much less. Um, and as I bring that up, as I turn this now clockwise, the pulse width modulation is going up. So we're getting more and more of that flash, and as you can see, it's getting it appears to be getting brighter as well. Okay, until I turn it all the way around, and then it's permanently on effectively. Okay, so let's turn that back again. So you can experiment with that, and we've got that connected up to a well, it's A7 on this little or A5. Let's have a look at the code and we'll find out exactly, won't we? So we've got it connected up to PWM pin still pin 9 and have I not defined where the oh dear, let's have a look frequency yes um, A5 I've said here so that's where that little um, pot there is connected to and the only reason I've got that one and not another one of these is because I haven't got another one of these okay that's, that's all. I mean, these are much easier to use than those little things. These things are really meant for being soldered onto a, a breadboard, not a breadboard, a strip board or a circuit board or something. Easy enough to use a breadboard as well, though, actually. Just a bit fiddly to get your hands in there. So A5 determines the width of the pulse, and this one here on A0 determines the flash rate, the actual frequency, which you can set dynamically. Um, the code is very similar to what we had previously except here I and mean, there's a lot more comments in it for one thing but um, you can see here look this is how we set the frequency and we map it again this is how we set the mark space and we map it as well see how useful map is we just don't have to think about what to divide by to get this um, particular conversion between one set of values and another and then in the main loop all I do is say set the frequency depending on 
this pot value and go and get the mark space ratio from that one there and do a PMW right. Simple as that. Now this delay, I've, I've simply put in there for proof really that even though there's, there's a delay here at the end of the code, it doesn't affect what's going on down here one jot. And you could put a delay of 5,000 there and still work just the same. So that's, that's what it's um, really there for, just to prove the point. And that's it really. So let's um, connect up the LED now, this one here, to the 12 volt supply which I've disconnected for the time being, so I don't go and blind myself. Because believe me, this can get very bright. Now just a word on the hardware here. This um, LED that I've got here, I've got actually four of these, and you could probably put, well, I would think uh, at least four of these in parallel. The the MOSFET that runs this, this, this uh, thing here, is in fact one of these. So it's an RFP12N. 10L. Now this is a logic level MOSFET. That's something I must emphasize. It's no good going out and buying any old MOSFET. A logic level MOSFET ensures that the switch on, the full switch on of this MOSFET can be achieved with a 5 volt output. In fact, look, I've written it on there, 5 volt gate. So when the Arduino, which is all it can give out, of course, is 5 volts, when that delivers 5 volts on that PWM pin, this MOSFET will switch on fully and that's what we want now the spec sheet of these particular MOSFETs isn't isn't particularly brilliant the maximum resistance between the drain and source so that's the positive in the ground effectively is something like 0 0.2 ohms when it's fully on and you might think 0 0.2 ohms well, that's next to nothing well yeah next to nothing but it isn't nothing which means these these can if you really drive them hard still get warm more modern and expensive mosfets will come down to like 0 0.05 of an ohm it really is ridiculously low however having said that these are about a quid a piece and i bought these from china these ones um, a pack of 10 I immediately blew up two because I touched them with my fingers, so they're very static sensitive, so I have to be very careful when I put this in here. Do not touch the pins on these. Static sensitive, that's why they're inside this static bag. Okay, it's not for not for fun, it's uh, it's to protect them. That's interesting. I've just noticed it says made in Morocco. What made in Morocco shipped to China and shipped from China back to me. Hmm, okay. Anyway, um, they're still about a pound a piece, just just a sh fraction under, which is pretty expensive, isn't it? It's not something you'd want to willy-nilly use in a project. I mean, it's half the price of a nano, for goodness sake. But there's no substitute for a decent MOSFET. So that's the one I've used. If you want a really low drain source resistance when it's fully on, you're going to have to spend a bit more. Depends on what you're going to do going to do but for this this little xenon uh, i keep saying the word xenon because i've got this thing here it's, it's made me think about xenons all the time the led strobe here doesn't care i mean 0.2 ohms is nothing so let me wire this up and we'll just see what sort of effects we can get i'll try and point it over in the room somewhere here and we'll just see if it actually can be picked up by the camera and i don't get blinded i hope either it's really bright okay let's get set up and come right back Right, here we are in a completely darkened room, well, completely, and uh, I think you can sort of see the strobe effect here. My camera's going mad, of course, trying to um, get the, the correct exposure and failing miserably. Right, so at least it's now in focus, and um, if you can imagine this is a dance hall and people are waving their arms about, heads, whatever. I think you can see that's a pretty effective thing, isn't it? Um, certainly if you had two or three of these um, LEDs wired up together, it would be more than enough, even for a small village hall, to be quite honest. So that's, um, oof, it, this really is blindingly bright. It's um, not pleasant to look at at all. So when you're building this, assuming you do, please don't look at it directly. Okay, let's get back to the uh, workbench. Now, whilst I was um, trying to give you a demo there, what it's going to be like in real life, it was pretty unpleasant looking at that light head on. But um, And there's a lot of controversy about flashing lights triggering epilepsy. But they reckon as long as it's below about 18 hertz, there's been no proven cases of epilepsy being triggered by a flashing light, allegedly. 
I'm not an expert, it's just what I've read on the internet. And we're limiting this to, um, I think I said 10 or 12 in the code, I can't remember which, but it's more than enough for that stop, start, strobe effect you get, you know, when you're dancing or whatever. Um, we don't need it in fast than that, so I don't think there's going to be any danger there. So I think I think that sort of brings it to an end, really. I think we've covered all the code. Um, would you believe my Windows 10 PC crashed in the middle of that? First time ever. So I've, I've lost my code window and I've lost my browser window. In fact, it's lucky that life continued on Earth as we knew it. But uh, right, let me bring that back up and we'll have another look. Right, here we are back on the code bin again. I think we've um, discussed more or less everything on. I've put plenty of comments on here. Not, it's not a difficult thing, is it? And it's all down thanks to that uh, wonderful PWM library that we've included. That is the secret of this. Now, there's just one thing. If you are going to build um, uh, an LED strobe light, this is the, um, the original one, as I said. Let me just bring it back to the main screen. Now, this has got some sort of reflector in here, sort of a mirrored reflector with a bulb in the middle. Look at the difference when I hold this up against that. I mean, the, the light output, even on just the reflected one of this, is considerably amplified. I mean, even just looking at it myself here, if I hold that in the middle, which is quite difficult to do, but the, the overall effect is quite pronounced. So building this into the box with some kind of um, aluminium reflective, uh, reflective backing or something, foil, anything like that, would really improve it. I mean, I've just pulled it out. Yeah, I have. I've just pulled it out. Actually, I'm not unhappy about pulling that out. That was really quite bright, which means it's going to be great if you're going to build this for um, a party or something, and it's getting near Christmas. So whenever you're watching this video, I think we're on to a winner here. Um, one final thing. I just want to show you where I bought this from, because there's two bits to this. There's the LED front that you can see here, and then there's this heat sink. You really shouldn't run, run this without any kind of heat sink. These get hot. I mean really hot. Maybe not in a strobe type environment because they're only on for such a short period of time. But uh, even so, bonding them to this heat sink, they're, they're pennies, these heat sinks, about 40 pence. And these aren't much more. Let's just have a quick look at the, uh, the browser window and then we'll see a bit more. Um, right, here we are. Right, so there we are. It's a 4 watt, 48 LED, it says, um, 480 milliamps. Well, funnily enough, I'm not running 480 milliamps through this. I think it came up to about 200. So maybe if you had a 14 volt power supply, you might get to something like that. And then they would get hot. But as I say, they 82 pence each at the moment. I certainly didn't pay £2.10, so I don't know what that's on there for. I bought four of these, and then the heat sinks that go with them. The heat sinks are about 41 pence. I don't think I've got them on here. No, that's a PWM controller that I was looking at. Inter yeah, that's interesting, actually. Look, that's a speed controller using PWM. Um, but it's £2.53, which is about the price of an Arduino, a bit more maybe, uh, an Uno, that is. But it uses a 555 timer, and that's all it can do. can't do anything else, whereas our little Nano, of course, can do loads of stuff, can't it? So I was just checking out, you know, what it, what it can and can't do. So that's why I've ordered that. You can get these anywhere, though. Ideally, you want to pick up sort of, you know, four or five in a bundle. You probably get them for about, what, four quid then, maybe? Three fifty, something like that. Maybe that's why I bought four of these. Maybe it was a bundle at the time, can't remember. But do pick up the heat sinks. These are little tiny aluminium heat sinks that uh, go with them. Look, they're all finned and everything. Because I've got one of these down in my workshop. Because um, I've got one of these running permanently to illuminate my my work tray when I'm doing soldering and stuff. You might have seen it. And this gets, I don't know, warm then, I suppose, without this heat sink. And in between the LED and this heat sink, there's something, it's adhesive thermal bond. You can either buy it in um, like uh, epoxy resin tubes or this was just a double-sided sheet. You peel off the plastic. I've shown it to you before, actually, in the, a previous video about these items. And you just stick it all together like that. And it's Bob's your uncle. It's really easy and good to do. Anyway, I reckon two or three of these will give you such a blindingly bright strobe that it'll be good for parties the year to come. Remember, in the party mode, less is more. Remember, this is a DJ talking, okay? Grooving on down. Okay, that's it for today. Enjoy your Z... Your, uh, not Xenon. Let's say the right word. 
Enjoy your LED party strobe and I hope you've learned something about PWM as well. Great. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. Please leave comments down below, subscribe, share and give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.